Stitchless TV and today we are going to make a coat in 30 minutes but not an ordinary coat. Come and have a look. Come de garçon, eat your heart out. Look at this amazing Japanese stroke barber, would you say barber coat? Look at that and it's made in 30 minutes. All you need for this tutorial is some fabric where both sides are the right side. I'm using this quilting. I've got one meter wide by two meters long and I'm folding it over. And the other thing you need is some bias binding which is just to finish off the edges. We put it on here like this and it wraps around so that you don't need to hem your fabric. So all you've got to do is go into a shop and ask for some knitted bias binding and good hab haberdasherers will have it. And the last thing you need is some ribbing to finish off the sleeves for the cuffs and also for the neck. Now, I've pinched my husband's jumper but please don't tell him, you're not going to tell him are you? Because it's just a perfect colour to go with my fabric. Right, I've got my fa fabric folded in half. So that was two meters by one meter piece of fabric folded in half and we're basically going to cut a shape like this out of just one layer. So I'm going to do that now and I'm going to do it 30 centimeters away from the edge, 30 centimeters like that and going about halfway up. So I'm going to do it on one side roughly first of all and I'm going to start coming round now so I get a nice curve there. And then I'm going to fold it over, make sure it's 30 centimetres away from the edge on the other side and then just start coming up on the other side. And whilst I'm here, I'm just going to stick a little notch there which will signify the centre back. So basically this part here around the arc of the arch is going to be the neck. So that's where I'm going to apply my ribbing. I'm going to have to make my first cut in my hubby's jumper. The first cut is always the, the deepest. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not going to start singing. The first cut is always the, um, the trickiest thing to do. Now, when I use ribbing or an old jumper, I'm going to keep this because that's really lovely and I'll probably use it later on for the cuffs or something. So I'm going to leave a little bit of space there and I'm going to come up here. So I'm just going to cut a piece across the width as big as I can because I don't know how how big I need it. So I'm coming across the jumper, try and make it equidistant. Right, this piece is about 49 centimetres and because it's double by about 18 and then I just folded it over. Now I, I will need to press that so I'm going to press it now. Right, so I've got my ribbing that's been cut to the right shape. I'm just using one layer, I'm putting the notches together, we're going to sew from the centre, stretch your ribbing as you go, keep stretching it until it goes off into nothing and then do the same on the other side. So look, don't be scared, you just match up your notch, so we're only doing half of it, we're stretching the ribbing, not the fabric underneath which wouldn't stretch anyway. We're going to go backwards and forwards and as we go along we're going to really stretch that ribbon and I'm a large centimetre away from the edge. I've got the ribbing going off to the edge there but I'm just going to carry on sewing a centimetre away from the edge, look, like that and go backwards and forwards. So it will look like, do you see that? So it looks like that. So look this is what you've got so far and then when it's pressed it will be fine but look how professional that looks and then we've just got to do the same now on the other side. Now when you do the other side you probably will need to turn it over and do it that way round so really remember to stretch that ribbing underneath as you sew. Okay so we've, we've put the ribbing on the neck it wasn't that big a deal was it but when it's pressed it will be stretched out like that. Right, very important, when you press it, don't stretch it out into a straight line, you've got to keep it in the shape that it's going to be. So get your iron, 
and give it a good old press. So you're stretching it back out to its normal shape. See how I'm doing? I'm stretching the arch back into its normal shape, but I'm definitely not stretching here. So look how professional it looks. It's such an easy way to get professional look, the ribbing look. But now, before we do anything else, I want to trim off all these sort of uneven bits. So I'm going to do that now with my scissors. Right, now's the time for using your bias binding to seal off your edges. And you're going to do it all the way round the edge of your coat. So find a place to start that isn't really going to show. I think I'm going to start at the neck. I've got to grab all of that material and wrap this around. Right, so what you're doing is you're capturing all this raw edge here into the bias binding. It's just sort of grabbing it and you're doing it all with one stitch. And then you just work your way round all the way around the coat. But the good thing is, is that it bends around, it bends around curves and goes around corners and stuff. Phew. The neck is actually the trickiest part, particularly on my little mini JL machine, because we've got three layers of, machine, uh, of material. Now I'm coming to the single edge and look how easy it is. I'm just holding it at the back and there's a natural fold in there. They, they've got like a line where it folds and then you just fold that over, hold it down and then you just sew. Right, we're coming now to a corner and when you do the corners they're a little bit tricky but they're not that bad now what you do is this come and have a look right so um, there's my corner can you see that yeah so that's my corner I'm gonna go all the way to the edge like that so just turn the material round now and then I'm folding in the corner kind of like an envelope so I'm pushing that under the machine and hopefully you might have to lift it a little bit with these machines. Have we got a good corner there? It should be a little bit mitered, you see. That's fine. And then you just work your way all around the whole coat. I really, really like it. It's amazing. Now, I've got it the right way up. So this is the right way up. And we've got to stitch up the side seams, but I don't want to hide all that lovely hard work. You've just applied, what, seven metres of bias binding. We want it to show. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to overlap the seams. So rather than putting them right sides together, I'm overlapping them like that. Look, can you see that? And I'm going to put them all the way up together. I want a little gap. I want to leave a little split because I think it looks cool. So I'm going to sew about 10 centimetres from the hem coming all the way up and I need a hole for my arm to go through or I won't be able to move. Although it would be a cape. Oh, that'd be a good idea but we're not doing it today. So I'm going to sew 10 centimetres away from the edge straight up and leave about 22 centimetres here. So I'm going to take that now to my machine. So look, I've got that kind of overlap going on. Can you see that? And I'm matching up the hemline. I'm deciding how much of a split I want. And I think I want that much of a split. I'll measure it later to make sure it's the same on the other side. Can you see? I'm sewing in the stitch line from where I applied the bias binding. I'm looking for my pedal, which is lost. I've got my pedal now, that's good. And so go backwards and forwards, first of all. A couple of times, actually. Ooh, sounds a bit dodgy. Going backwards and forwards, and now I'm just going to stitch all the way up until I get to where I think my armhole is going to be. So look, I'm following wherever that stitch line is from when I applied the bias binding, and I'm stitching just right on top of it. So I'm stopping now, about 22 centimetres from the shoulder. So I just measured that just to make sure. So I've got my tape measure and it is, yeah, 22 centimetres. So I'm going backwards and forwards to close off the seam. Can you see what we've done? Look how fantastic it is. But we can't try it on until we've done the other side. So let's quickly do the other side. Right, it can be confusing when you've got to do the other side, but look, it's just the same thing. Remember, the front goes over the back, 
So we're overlapping it. We're making sure that the hems line up because then they won't look right if they don't line up. I said about a 10 centimeter split. Do you remember we left a little split over here on the other side? And then just take it to the machine and do the same on the other side. I can't speak. I think it's amazing. I'm thinking Comme de Garçon, Japanese. Esther said Japanese barber. Look at it. Look, we've got these sort of lapels. I didn't even mean for them to be lapels. Look at the lapels. Look at the arms. Do you want to have a look at the back? Amazing shape at the back. We've got our ribbed neckline. Shall I try it on? Oh, yes. Yeah, definitely. That wasn't long, was it? I really like it. Can you tell how much I like it? I think it's really so... Yeah, I mean, it's a high-end catwalk look, Do isn't it? Look at that. 30 minutes. And how much did it cost? Maybe 20 quid. Thanks a lot for watching Stitchers TV. Now, if you want to see some more tutorials on how to make gorgeous coats, go to stitchless.co.uk. Bye. <laughs>